Welcome to another edition of Politics Done Right. I'm here today with Dr. Anand Bhatt, and we have an interesting subject. This guy is a doctor, but we are going to be talking election, electability, and uh, quite a bit more. And uh, the title of the show today, and you know, he actually chose the title, and I'm so proud that he chose the title because I'm like, hell, guy, are you a blogger? <laughs> Puncturing myths about the election. Let's talk about that, Anand. So sometime over the summer, uh, we had a series of excitements. I'm talking about myself, <laughs> about the election. And I just started writing a bunch of articles uh, about the election and what I thought the election could be. And uh, we, we deci I decided to, like, look at the data. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there who abuse data. They massage data. They talk about the data. But they mostly just abuse the data. Mm -hmm. So, Egberto, today... We are going to talk about the data in a way that you will never hear on the mainstream. No, which one are we going to talk? Start with. We're starting with the age data, We're right? Talk about age. Because you you have this tenet where you say, ah, you guys can say whatever you want about data, but the reality is the only thing that matters is somebody's age. Yes, I take exception. Convince me. So, uh, I I will convince you with multiple election results. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what is something you hear from uh, MSDNC? And CNN fake news. What, what do you hear about who's the best person in those debates? You, you, you know, who, who's, who's you know when you're you know when you're talking to somebody that's really into politics. <laughs> when he called MSNBC MSDNC, which it has turned out to be, uh, talk to me. Oh, who, me. Who do they say is the best? The best what? A uh, candidate on the stage. Well, well and they, they, like a no name. Who's the no name they always bring up? The no name they I don't think you want to talk about the guy from Indiana, right? Oh no, the, he's pulling okay. The one you okay. blow her. Oh, you're talking Blow about Klobuchar. Him. Yes. Well, they, they love, love Klobuchar. They love her. Right. Like, no, I said, have you met, have you seen a Klobuchar sticker? I haven't. No. I've never seen a Klobuchar sticker. But that is who the mainstream That's media wants as an option. So okay. So I decided to say, all right, let's look at the elections and, and let's combine actual historical knowledge mm -hmm. and demographics, which mm -hmm. is something I studied in college. Right. And let's like actually look at election results. Mm -hmm. So do you remember back in the year two thousand Al Gore was supposed to win Florida? Yes. No, no. But he did. But he did, fine. Yeah. But why was it considered a safe bet he would? Because a lot of old people lived there and they, they, they thought he was going to keep their social security. Exactly. Right. So what's the difference between the old people back in two thousand and the old people now? Um, I am not sure what you want to get out of so that, but I don't think there should be much of a difference. No, those old people are dead. Um, <laughs> the difference is that there's very few of those 80-year-olds uh, in 2000 or around today. They would be that's, 99. That's a good one. Yeah. So um, that generation, the greatest generation, the yes. World War II generation, Great Depression generation. They're gone. They're, yeah, they're not really part of the public discourse or voting oh, public anymore. Oh, I think anymore. I see where you're going. Okay. So we talk about... You know them, and the, 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 they were a starch, you know, staunch Democratic voting bloc, right? Because they grew up during a, a challenging era, and they era. grew up as cultural Democrats. Yes, okay. and how you vote typically for three elections tends to determine how you vote the rest of your right. Vote. Got it. So that generation uh, is gone. So the current old people are people like our parents, right? And they're the people who didn't experience the bad things of the 1930s and 40s. Right. They experienced upside yeah they were there in the 50s and 60s and really there wasn't really a major economic problem till right. like the mid 70s yeah you know oil embargo and, and yeah and then that. you know yeah. a little bit of turbulence in the 80s but really if you started your career before 2000 you, you've mostly had more ups than downs right. it's pretty fair to say right if you started your career after 2000 let's just say it's pretty much been down right you know so uh that generation the myth is that the myth that my dad loves to say is, right. oh, the older you get, the more conservative you get because you're getting smarter. No, but it's, that's not not it. it's, not, it's not true. Did, well, is he agreeing with that or is he disagreeing with that? Is he He's agreeing just, that, that, well, that as you get older, you get conservative? He's because just I've irritate me. I've spoken to him before and I think he just has always been a conservative. He's always been irritating. <laughs> I, I think conservatism <laughs> is secondary. <laughs> So we're gonna. So oh, what what you see is, and you can even look at the state I live in, work in right now, which is Ohio. Mm -hmm. You have a guy like John Glenn. Right. John Glenn was an astronaut. Right. He was a, a, a quite liberal Democrat. Mm -hmm. Went to the uh, outer space. Came back. He was a liberal Democratic senator mm -hmm. until the '90s. His last election, he believe, beat a guy named Mike DeWine, baby boomer, mm -hmm. who is now the, the Republican or governor. Yes. Yes. So what, that that was a perfect example to me of like the the. 
partisan gap between right. the baby boomer and the the, the greatest generation. Mm-hmm. So, so, so I, I started looking at the da- data. I started looking at exit polls, and this is, this is if you ever get into exit polling, it becomes very addictive. So don't do it. But I, I did it. He's just like I did that. It. I looked at the you data, are just guys. Like that. I, it's like looking into the sun. I did it. It hurt my eyes, but I, I found the truth. What was the truth? The truth, on? besides Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance. Anan. The truth. I'm an engineer. A, I don't want to see that book, Anan. <laughs> okay, the truth, the truth is that how you vote is dependent on your age. So I looked here, and the fact is that uh, the Pew Charitable Trust has shown that the generations that are baby boomer and silent generation, mm-hmm. which is like born during World War II, uh, like the John McCain age mm-hmm. group, um, that group has become Republican and has become even more Republican as they get older. Right. Then we have Generation X, which I think starts in 1965. 64. 64. Actually, 64 ends, the, yeah, 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 65. Yeah. So 65 and ends in 1980. Uh, mm-hmm. Then you have the Millennial, which starts in 1980, ends in like 98. And right. then you have the, the post millennials or Gen Zs. Z's yeah. yeah, we don't have a word for them mm-hmm. yet. But uh, uh, so what, you'll, what we've already started to see is that the young people are voting Democratic. This means young, meaning under 45, mm-hmm. and the Generation X, and they're getting more democratic with each younger cohort. And what we're also seeing is even Generation X is being shifted to the left as well. So every election now is becoming a vote uh, gap, uh, an election between over 45 v- versus under 45. Now, question now. You did that uh, analysis. Did you analyze what percentage of the voting public is 45 and under? Yes. This is th- what Your question is extremely important. So uh, I'll get to that, but let's just show examples. Over 45, how Republican are they? Mm-hmm. 2008, John McCain would be president. Right. 2012, Mitt Romney would be uh, uh, president. president. Uh, U.S. House election, 2014, mm-hmm. 54% over 45 voted Republican. Mm-hmm. 2016, 54%. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's age group, over 45, only 50, 50% voted Republican last year, the year she won. The, 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 the where she won big. The yeah. where she won big, yeah. her age group did not vote for her. Right. 50% voted Republican, only 49% Democrat. Right. What did the youth, Alexandria, and all the people she criticizes? Right. 6136. There you go. Under 45. There you go. 6136. She owes her seat. To the to to AOC. under forty, yes, <laughs> to that age group. Yes. Okay, now let's uh, now let's. Uh, what you said was extremely important. Under forty-five, what's the age split? Uh, I think forty-five is the. I know there, there's two different. There's a difference here. There's the registered voters and there are the people who vote. So uh, I'm looking at the exit poll. Okay. So the so exit that's poll people, who, vote. people yeah. who already voted. Yeah. Okay. Ahead. So if we look, typically. You're looking at 60 to 65 percent of the people are over 45. Oh, that's okay. not good. That, that's the midterm. That's the midterm number. Okay, but let me stop you there because that's one number. The other number is potentially what's the split? Uh, potentially, it could be 50-50. So for uh, no, what I mean, we have to find what the median age of Americans are. A uh, voting Amer- the median age of voting Americans. It's going to be over 45, I bet. Okay, so you think it's over yeah, 45? So that I means over they, the over 45 would still have sort of a tad. Of an advantage. So, so let's say Obama 2008, which was a young election, mm-hmm. 47% or under 45. That's the highest I could find. 47%. Under 45. But you know what? And still they didn't vote at the same level of, of the older folk, right? So that actually speaks well for, um, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So, so, so to give you a number in a midterm, you're looking mm-hmm. at 60 to 65% in the midterm. So I looked at these moderate candidates. So I listed the states last year. I'm sure you followed some yeah. of those midterms. Well, so, I think I blogged one of your. Yeah, yeah. I blogged it for you. But I'm just giving an example where here we have a moderate candidate. We have and and these all lost, I, I, if I'm not mistaken. But they definitely lost the people over 45. So you have Florida, Arizona, North Dakota, Missouri, Missouri yeah. Indiana, Tennessee. All of those except for Arizona, the Democrat lost. Okay. So here are some of the numbers. 44% for the Democrat in North Dakota, 43% in Missouri. Uh, and that's Claire McCaskill. You will see her on right. MSNBC all the time. No, Only, that's her new job. Yeah, 56% of people her age group did not vote for, for her, her in Missouri. Right. So remember, when she's talking about moderates, no, it's did an it? age thing. Right. Indiana, a moderate, 55% voted Republican or, or over 45 uh, Arizona was close, 46-53, so they only lost it by eight points. Mm-hmm. Florida, a bad sign for next year's election, 45-54. 45% voted for the Democrats. That was in 2018. This is last year. Yeah, the Senate election. Oh. Yeah, I'm running last year's Senate election. Oh. Look at Montana. Uh, you got uh, 45-52. So, but wait, wait a minute. Um, as far what was it? 
representation of young people though you're giving me the split i'm giving you the what it looks like in the split right and so uh so since we're in texas i'll give you a tennessee which is kind of a southern state right and you have texas so in tennessee we got 36 percent uh voted republic uh, democrat 62 percent did not now if we look at Beto O'Rourke, who was running to the left, I right. would say... He was uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, of any other Texan. Yes, uh, any other Texan, but against many of these candidates I just mentioned. Right. Definitely left him a Caskill. Right. Definitely left him in Indiana. Definitely right. left Tennessee. So Beto O'Rourke, I got right here. He got... Uh, uh, so under 45, Phil Bredesen, who's conservative, I right. would say, Democrat, got 61-38 under 45. Beto O'Rourke got 59-40%. Here you go. But, but... Beto O'Rourke got the youth turn up to 39%, and it was close. Right. Stacey Abrams got even closer, and she brought it up to 40% so under 45. 41, we win. Yes. So, so we're looking at uh, 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 the higher the percentage of the youth, uh, 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 the more we win. And if why does that make sense? It makes sense because Beto O'Rourke ran on youth-oriented issues of free college free uh, uh, Medicare for I, all, I don't, you and know, that drives the turnout. Yeah, you know, I, I tell you something, and, and the, the thing that gets me, right, I mean, I, I, you and I understand when they, we say free college and free Medicare for all, all that good stuff, what it really means. It's really not free. Uh, it's pay it forward, college pay, and, and health care is what we all pay for. Everybody pays for it. Um, that, for some reason, doesn't get listed appropriately when we, when, when we say it that way. So... Just a caution there that I yes. that I try to work with um, going forward. So, so when 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 one is watching, this is some media skepticism here. When you're watching MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, you're looking at TV channels where the average viewer is 65, 67, and I think Fox News is 70. What is MSNBC? MSNBC is that old? Oh, they're all in their 60s. Wow. The youngest network is in their 60s. Wow. Fox News, I'm pretty sure, is in their 70s. Wow. So. Wow. When you talk about things like that, these people went through college already. Right. They're already on Medicare, probably. Right. This is not a population that wants to hear about young people. Mm -hmm. So, so when we look at the presidential level, we look at Obama, two thousand eight. Forty-seven percent of the uh, voters were young. Then forty-six, and then in Hillary Clinton, twenty sixteen, forty-four percent. You can easily see that the youth cost her the election. Let's go to Texas. So now let's go to Texas. Now when we talk about Texas elections. Uh, again, my home state. I always got a lot of passion for Texas. Yes, we know. And, and, we know. And, and, and so when I went to college uh, at the University of Texas from 2002 to 2006. And as you can see, this, this is a younger Longhorn. This is a real <laughs> Longhorn here. That's a His younger are Longhorn. Longer than mine, yes. Yeah, my horns are longer. Go <laughs> yes, <ahead>. yes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there, there, there are these questions about the polls. So when I wrote this article, it was showing in the Dallas Morning News that uh, uh, Joe Biden and Bernie were leading by 2% against Trump in Texas. Mm -hmm. And you're going to start seeing in the next year, you're going to see all these polls about Texas. And it's not going to make any sense. Okay, So I'm here to give you some knowledge, some baseline knowledge of what explains what's going to go on in Texas. Now in Texas, we have a state that's big. we got, what, 28, 29 million people. Yes. We have now, uh, as of the last election... Uh, which is your constitutional amendment right. in the Houston city election uh, last month, 15.96 right yeah. million voters in Texas. Yes. Almost 16 million voters. You said it actually increased by more than you expected. Yes, it increased, yes. So even since Beto O'Rourke lost his mm -hmm. election, the number of voters in Texas has gone up uh, uh, about another 200,000. Okay, and then the number of people who are registered and their ballots are not, uh, what do you call it, uh, out of date right. is 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 fourteen point seven million. No, I had asked you, and I don't know if you've gotten that number or not yet. I, when you sent me that report, I asked you if you know what the breakdown is of those people who are voting. I mean, who are registering now? No, in Texas, we don't have partisan vo voter registration. This is why nobody people are going to be shocked with what's going to happen mm -hmm. because we don't have data. We just know that the only thing in Texas that you know to say that you're a Democrat or Republican is which primary you vote in. Right. That's it. There's no registration, no intention, nothing. So you are not blocked. You could do Democrat this year. You could do Republican next year. There's no way to measure how many Democrats or Republicans are in Texas. So the only thing you can do is go with a demographic calculation. Right. So what happened between 2002 and 2006 when I was in college is Texas became a majority-minority state. Right. It only increasingly has become more minority mm -hmm. and younger with time. So our age 45 and younger is very very diverse right you know a majority of 
K through 12 students in Texas are Hispanic are, now. Yeah, that's what Hispanic. you were telling me. Not that. even minority, Hispanic. Hispanic yeah. Just Hispanic is a yeah. majority of the school system. Right, right. And now you're looking at an older population, more rural population, that is uh, uh, more conservative and white and more evangelical. So we have interesting uh, 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 dynamics. Uh, dynamics here right. with the youth. Now, why is this important? Well, I think uh, Texas, uh, the voting is going to catch up with the demographics. Right. I think it took 20 years for Texas politically to adapt to the changes that happened to the demographics. So here's what I'm gonna say about that. Uh, what, what, what year did you come to Texas? I came to Texas 1980. Okay, so Egberto is part of the Republicanization of Texas, even based on his uh, neighborhood he lives in here in Kingwood. So Texas used to be, when I was growing up, right. Beaumont, Texas, where I grew up. Very blue. Yes, oh, blue, Oil worker, union, right. workers. That was a Democrat, and rural especially. Mm -hmm. Okay? A guy like Egberto, hotshot coming to UT, living in Kingwood, that's Republican. Okay? But I'm, I'm not. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. okay. The changes. <laughs> so Texas in 1976 was the last time a Democrat won. Yeah. It was uh, uh, Jimmy Carter. He got two million votes in that last election, mm -hmm. and then they've never won since. Right. Now, the demographics of Texas between uh, 19. Uh, 78 and 1998 became uh, more suburban, more urban, more city people, more white collar workers. Right. Okay. The white collar workers were not that common in the 80s. Right. Right. You know, you re I remember like we were just it was went, oil. It was oil. oil. Yeah, yeah, it was just, just oil and all these yes, roughnecks. And, all these know? rough people. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it became the suburban state. And what happened between 1970 and 1988? The state became first Republican at the presidential level, and then going down to the governor's I race. I remember when they came and knocking then off one after the legislature, other. Legislature, yes. and then even it took even till like 2010, I think, to get some right, of those right, local county governments. Right, right. Okay, so that change between 78 and 98, where Texas became a suburban state, basically, uh, it took up to 12 years really to digest those changes. Right, right. Politically, to hit even the county level. Now. Now, what do I think? Okay, so if you look at some of the numbers here, you can see how the Republicans have gone from, again, less than 2 million in 1978 up to, in 2004, the Republicans for president got 4.5 million votes. Okay, and that's, in many ways, that's their high water mark. Yeah. Okay, and since 2000. Tell them why it's the high water mark. The high water mark is because you had the, uh, again, uh, the, the why it's the high water mark is because you had the classic uh, Texan of this era, the, the non native Texan, mm -hmm. George Bush. Uh, move to the city right. and and win on Republican votes and and he won the biggest election at the presidential level in Texas uh, since since then basically now what's happened is since that 4.5 million votes the Republican vote in Texas has not grown it has grown in f 14 years it has grown by a hundred thousand votes that's right it. and talk about the Democratic vote so now. meanwhile the Democratic vote since John Kerry has been growing approximately 90,000 people a year or 360,000 people during the same period per presidential yeah. year. And now we have margins where that 4.5 to 4.6 million is not growing. And Texas's changes, the political system is going to slowly start digesting those to make it Right. represent the demographics of today. Well, I tell you what, Anand, it's interesting because the, the leader, the, the Republican leader sent a, 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 an emergency notice to their RNC yeah. saying, we are in trouble. We are concerned about losing in 2020. So what are what's your thoughts on 2020? Well, I, I agree with that. Okay, so let's let's look at some of our Republican some leaders in, in so, Texas. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at our leaders. Look, where's our lieutenant governor from? Maryland. Right. Where's George Bush from? Connecticut. Connect, right. Where, where is, uh, uh, I think the attorney general is also from like North Dakota or something okay, like I didn't that. Know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you got a lot of non-native people who brought the Republican Party to Texas. So that 4.5 million number, I think everyone should keep that in mind. Because if you're going to start seeing some of these polls in Texas, what number keeps coming up with Donald Trump's numbers? What, what, what is he pulling at it's in Texas? It's 40-something, isn't it? 44%. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, 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 uh, I, if we predict that... If we look over the last 16 years, for every new voter, 67 to 80 percent of every new voter that has voted has voted for a Democrat. Right. Only six to 10 percent have voted for a Republican. So you asked me, what's the breakdown? And I said, we don't know. But prior history for the last 14 years has shown every new voter added has a 65 percent to 80 percent chance, chance of being, of being a, Democrat a Democrat right. than the rest is third party. 
67% chance of being a Republican. So every vote that goes up, you're looking at almost 80% chance of it being a Democrat. So what we are saying is there is a distinct possibility that as opposed to the next cycle, we could actually see a tight race this cycle where we actually pull it out if, if the voters go to the polls. Yes. So I think the number of 4.5 million, I don't think the Republicans will fall from that. I think the people that are going to vote for that, high. they're not going to fall. But I don't know if they can actually increase very much. Right. I, I find it difficult to imagine they'll hit 5 million. I find it difficult, you know, even 4.8 million. Right. I mean, you live in Texas full time. I don't. Do you think Donald Trump will lose votes? Like his absolute number? Yeah. Do you think all 4.68 million people speak, will vote for him again? No, I, I speak to all the people no matter their ideology. Yeah. And there are a lot of people frustrated with him. And I've had people come up to the gym and say, I'm going to make your day. <laughs> that you're not going to vote for him again? Right. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the the polls from... And that's empirical. I mean, that, that is sort empir of... A, not, that, not empirical. What's the word? That is... Uh, well, anecdotal. Yeah, but yeah, anecdotal, yeah. I mean, your neighborhood is a perfect example of that. And if Donald Trump falls... For, from the 4.68 million. He loses. And, and I think he could lose yeah. votes. I think he may not even get as many votes in right. Texas as he did last time. Right. If he loses 10, 20,000 votes, you know, and he's stagnant and the Democrat can go up, there's a chance it, it'll be close. Well, Hillary only lost Texas by what, five points? I have 800,000 votes. And what's and the five the, points? Uh, nine points, I think. Nine points? Nine points. Okay, but no, Beto okay. lost by 2.8. Two, yeah. Which, and he got 4 million votes. Right. Remember, Beto O'Rourke, got more votes than any Democrat in history. in history. And remember, what is an interesting number is what I call the yellow dog vote. The yellow dog vote was an old East Texas saying is that you would vote for anyone who was a Democrat, right. even if it was a yellow yeah. dog. Yeah. So who was a yellow dog candidate last year? Uh, the governor's candidate, Lupe Valdez? Oh, Lupe Valdez, oh, yes. Oh, my God. Terrible candidate, right? I interviewed her twice. Yeah. I do you know she got more votes than Barack Obama in 2008? You have got to be kidding okay. me. So if she can get three and a half million... Then somebody. The, then, 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 then that's the floor. And then we got to go to the next one. What's the? Okay, right, here's the next California. one. California. No, California. California. So why I think this is important? I've also followed California politics for a long time. It's it's, it's a problem of mine. I follow too much politics. But we have in California the original Republican state. Right. And Texas, let's be honest, is looking a lot like, like California, California these days, especially California about 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, even the size of Cal Texas's population today is what Texas, uh, California, California was, was in around then. 1985 mm -hmm. or so. Okay. What happened in California? Now, California was a union state after the Civil War, mm -hmm. whereas Texas, as we all know, was a Confederate state. Yes. And the Confederate states stayed Democratic for about 100 years, right. then slowly shifted Republican. The Union states stayed Republican for about 100 years and, so uh, and then so. started shifting towards Well, Democrats. actually, what happened is the people switched around parties. People yeah. switched around parties, yeah. but they, yeah. So now, uh, remember, we have three presidents who are Republican from California. We have Herbert Hoover, Richard Nixon, and Ronald, Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Those right. are some superstars in the Republican right. Party. Okay. Now, uh, basically, it was a one-party state until the 50s. The recent governor, uh, Brown, his father was governor in the 50s. Mm -hmm. That's when it became a two-party state. Right. They, the Democrats didn't win anything in California for decades, for decades, just mm -hmm. because of the Civil War. Now, what I noticed in California was that between the two biggest landslides in California... By the way, this is also looking through that, those, those numbers things, those numbers that yeah. you talk about. Yes, this is looking at absolute numbers. I'm not looking at exit polls. Okay, so these absolute. Yeah, yeah okay. so I'm looking at the absolute numbers, and I'm looking at, well, the backbone of the Republican Party was Southern California. San Francisco has always been liberal. Mm -hmm. That Northern California has always been for the liberals, whether they were Republican or they were Democrat, they were always liberal. Mm -hmm. The, the change in California politics is the shift in Los Angeles. Right. And Los Angeles has become more democratic with time. And this is now, because more people live in Southern California than Northern California, mm -hmm. that has made California's politics shift. And areas similar to Southern California, which I would argue Texas is, mm -hmm. Arizona is similar to Southern California, right. uh, Las Vegas, Nevada is, mm -hmm. Colorado has some, some similarities. As California has shifted, California shifted, uh, politics have shifted to uh, the left. To the left. So we can see how between 1972 and 1984, uh, the Democratic vote began to grow from 3.4 to 3.7 million, 3.8, 3.9 million, and then eventually Bill Clinton won it. Remember, Bill Clinton's the first Democrat to win California in 1992. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. Besides LBJ in 1964, right. they voted Republican every election. Oh, wow. 
Well, yeah, I think so, the only reason El Vito was like a landslide to yeah, the country. Yeah, that was, uh, that's yeah, what like I don't 45 think, yeah. states, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, so uh, you know, John F. Kennedy never won California. Right. Uh, you know. Kennedy didn't? Wow, no, I, I didn't California. realize that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Cal- California's Republican state. Okay. Nixon was from California. Yes, yes, So yes. he ran against Nixon, so right, Nixon won right, California. Right, right, So uh, when we look at how L.A. became more diversified with time, uh, a lot of those populations in L.A. moved to Colorado. We see that uh, uh, the, the population is uh, became more democratic. The, so, yeah, left-leaning, exactly. Now, the reason the sim- some similarities won't happen, the conservative people in Texas... They're not going to leave Texas like they did California. <laughs> they they moved to Texas. They moved to Colorado. They are Texans. They, they are Texans. They yeah, will not they leave. They are Texans. There's yeah. no there's no Texas happening of right. these conservative people. Now, where was a very interesting comment I got, and this is for national uh, uh, th- uh, comment. Did I did I blog this one? Yeah, you blogged this one too. Okay, but I just it, I think it's easier to talk it through because you know people may not right. understand what I'm saying. Gavin Newsom said to HBO, right. he's the current governor. The Republican Party is a third party in California. And what's the second party? The Green Party? Uh, like he said, third party status. I, I know, I know. And I, I, and I didn't know what he meant by that yeah. until I started looking at these numbers. Right. Now, when you're looking now, look in the 2000s. California is solidly a dem- democratic yes, state, yes. but it is now extremely a democratic state. Well, actually, with this last election, we got a whole lot of uh, red district. Congress people, yes. any, you know, that actually came out. Yes. So Ronald for, Reagan once for said districts that were gerrymandered to keep all those Republicans together. So the, the Ronald Reagan once said that when a Demo, when a Republican dies, he, instead of going to heaven, he goes to Orange County. <laughs> so Orange County is where the uh, Richard yes. Nixon Library is. Yes. This is where post-war conservative politics began. It Orange, did not begin in Texas, not Orange in Houston. Orange County, California. Orange County, California is is your individualistic, free market, selfish culture. Uh, <laughs> hamburgers, <laughs> McDonald's, <laughs> cars. Like, this is America. Southern California is America. So we went from the Democrats winning uh, California by a, one point at the presidential level. 1.2 million, 1.2 million. Then with Obama, 3.2 million. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is the margin. The margin. Obama won with a margin of three point two when million. When Clinton was one point something. Uh, in two thousand, uh, Al Gore won by one point two nine million. Al uh, Kerry won by one point two three million. Wow. Ob- Obama brings it up into the three millions. Three point two million. Three million in twenty twelve. But when we talk about twenty sixteen, Donald Trump, the margin is four point two. Million. Hillary Clinton was 4.2 million. She won California by 4.2 million and won Orange County, the first Democrat to do since the Great Depression. Wow, yeah. So when we talk about the popular vote, even if Hillary had won California by the Obama margin, Donald Trump would probably be the popular vote winner. So what I'm trying to say is if any Democrat, including Hillary Clinton, can Mm. win California by greater than 4 million votes, I think it becomes extremely difficult. I would be even willing to put money down now that no Republican will win the popular vote next year because margins of 4.2 million in California. That takes incredible. Us all the states. That all the states, states, especially as Texas is yeah. getting narrower and narrower. Yeah, yeah, There's no yeah. major state. Even if they win Florida, it's going to be thin So that what, you know, I've, I've written about uh, how did the Republicans intended to have minority rule using the Supreme Court or using a court system. Yes. Well, this is... This, this I, I don't the, think... Yeah. If we look at every election, let's look at every popular vote since 1992. There has not been a single winner except for George Bush in 2004. Right. That is a Republican. Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton, Al Gore got the popular vote. Only one, which is uh, uh, um, George Bush in the second time, right. then Obama, Obama, Hillary. So that's six to one popular vote wins. Wow. With California, I don't think it's going to be possible. There's not enough people in Ohio to keep up with that. Even if right. Ohio is becoming right. more conservative, it's not going to happen. Then you look at the state legislature in California. In 2000, you're looking at a 54% Democratic majority. Right. They could block uh, tax laws. They could block budgets with a two-thirds majority. Even though they had a third of the, uh, of the, uh, of the chamber, they could mm-hmm. block things. Guess what? It's now 77% Democratic in the state house. They have. They can do whatever. It's, it's no, not. It's, it's, it's veto proof. Yes. Veto proof and it's a, a filibuster for everything. Yes. Yeah. Now, what's happening in our Senate races in California? 
you, Republicans are not even making it the ballot. This right. is why he's saying it's a it's a third party. Right. Because now it's Kamala jungle, Harris. Jungle, yes. Yeah. So Kamala Harris, for example, in 2016 was running against a congresswoman from Orange County. There was two Democrats to vote for. Mm -hmm. There was no Republican on the actual right, ballot. Right. Right. It literally was third party status. Right. right Republicans right. not even on the ballot. We're gonna look in a couple of years. I wouldn't be surprised that uh, there won't even be a Republican on the governor's race. Right. You know, the way things are going in California. Now, could this be Texas in maybe 20 years? It's possible. But I think Texas, if you look at California in the 1980s and we see the shifts, mm -hmm. and, 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 and instead of uh, in L.A. is Houston, you know, is Houston today becoming right. what L.A. was in the 80s, right. starting to trend one way right. because of the diversity and the urban uh, 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 vote, I think you, you can see where the future is heading. Well, that is, that is great. All right, let's talk a little bit uh, before you go. Uh, Medicare for all. Tell me, give me your thoughts. Uh, it's good. It's a, it's, it's a good idea. I've supported it since I was in medical school. Now, here's, here's my concern. I think the marketing of Medicare for all is, is horrendous. I think the, the reason that they're marketing Medicare, or rather, they're allowing the Medicare for all to be marketed as getting rid of your private insurance, or getting rid of your health care. And I do not understand why both Bernie and Warren don't come back and say that uh, that private insurance is controlling your life. Medicare for all gives you freedom. I think I 100 percent agree with you. I, I think in general, and it's not just for Medicare for all, the left needs to use the word freedom. Yes. And we need to take away the word freedom from things that actually make you unfree. Yeah, if you exactly. Are, if you are uneducated, are you free? No. If you cannot afford to go to a doctor, are you free? No. No. Okay. So, the 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 right going back at least to 1973 with Pinochet in Chile has used the word free markets, free people. Right. And in 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 healthcare, I can tell you, let's just stick it to a small topic. Healthcare for all, free market has not meant free choice. Um, my mother did not have a choice right. in her referral network. Right. Whereas my dad, who was actually on Medicare age, right. he could go wherever, wherever he wants. Wherever he wants, yeah. So what is freedom? Exactly. And, and, and I think they should be saying this is freedom. This is, you. it's not, it's free at the point of, again, this might be hard to convey. TV may not allow you to convey a subtle point, but you should be saying it's free at the point of service because you paid it in your taxes. And you're correct. We, we can't use that. Yeah. We have to find a way to tell folks, Met, we all. What I try to tell people is that Medicare for all is a democratization uh, of healthcare because what it means is simple, right? Everybody pays what they can afford, but everybody gets service. Yes, I was talking to a Ford worker, uh, for example, and uh, I told him, for example, let's pretend your Ford uh, um, employee employee pays two fifty a month in premiums. Mm -hmm. Now, fine. Oh, but my employer plays it. They don't. Play, you know, there's all these little, mm -hmm. you know, technicalities. But imagine if the secretary is paying two fifty a month, and the CEO plays two fifty a month for that same care. Is that it's fair? A, no, it's not. Because what if it's it was a two percent, four percent, five percent tax, right. it would be a lot less. It would be a progressive. And that is the the media is not allowing that message to go out, and that's why we have to get that message out. But we also have to. Uh, talk to the Elizabeth Warren and her people, Bernie Sanders and his people, to start messaging correctly, because one of the biggest problems we have is the lack of the, the lack of the ability to message in such a in a simple manner. You see, we a lot of times are too high uh, high whatever that mm -hmm. word is. We have to learn how to be more measured and get to where the people are. So you're in media, Egberto. Um, let me ask you, is it even possible to do traditional messaging in the traditional media? Or has no, it become so you, bad? You cannot. You can't, you can't even do you sound cannot. bites. The reason why you can't do in, 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 in commercial media, in what I call corporate media, is simple. How are you going to talk about uh, that the government paid for developing that drug that I was talking to Mythelia about, that drug that, secured, that, that makes AIDS invisible. When it's we the people who paid for it, and the drug company that's going to come on right after Chris Matthews comes and say, um, buy this drug, and you, we, you, know, you can't do that because you cannot, you cannot bite the hand that's feeding you. You know, I've heard some people with some great sound bites from the left-wing perspective. 
I don't think they'll let them on the TV. They won't. They won't let. I mean, I saw you, you, the Hill now on the well, on YouTube. You know, the, the they Hill. It, it is funny because my friend, yeah. uh, uh, what's her name, uh, uh, Crystal Ball. Yeah. Crystal Ball cannot get on. Crystal Ball came out and said something about MSNBC, and she was all but blackballed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Crystal Ball now has her network uh, station, which I I follow. I clip, and every now and then I'll put a little clip of it of it on on here. But you can't. She she won't get a lot of invitations to MSNBC, a place she worked at. Yeah. No, I know. I I think I think our idea of messaging. I mean, I agree with you. They should do better messaging. They have at least to do better at, messaging. At a debate area. But I would say the real fight is in those uh, uh, those uh, blue rooms or whatever they call it, the little, uh, those panels. Right. And I'll be honest, I don't think they're going to let Claire McCaskill on and they won't let the equivalent of Claire no, McCaskill but, but here's, on here's what for we the do. left here's at, what, at all. Here's what we do. The thing about it is you just, you said the magic word earlier and we're going a little bit over, but I want to talk about this. You said some magic earlier. Remember this. MSNBC, what's the age limit again? Oh, 62, 65, something and like that. So, so what you're telling me is you guys are getting a lot of your media right here. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of your media comes here. A lot of your media comes in all these other avenues. So what we have to do is learn how to saturate those avenues to the people. Because if it's 62, what's the breakdown that you just showed? You brought, you brought all the... Uh, yeah. This man <laughs> brought all the data. <laughs> I am. I mean, we're I am, looking at I a third looking, of the voters are over looking, 65. I am yeah, looking yeah, at the data that yeah, you're bringing yeah. me and telling you if Democrats learn to go to the avenues that Donald Trump went to. Yeah. Because everybody said the Russians this, the Russians that, right? Let's remember this. Donald Trump didn't have to pay the Russians to do it. He could have paid a marketing company to do oh, exactly what did. the Russians did for him. Or the Russians just bought what everyone else bought. Exactly. The way Goldman Sachs or another company and would that, have. And, and that's why we have to get off the Russia election thing. Because the problem is, like, Hillary Clinton was offered the same deal to go ahead and go to Facebook and lie to people. She chose not to. Or not lie to people. But, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, but, well, I mean. But the, you understand what I'm saying. I, I would say this is the biggest challenge right now. Because if we look at um, the Biden support, right. if we look at, at the Trump support, right. uh, I mean, so, I think we're going to have challenges anyway based on that, which generation that is. Right. But we still need to do a better job. But I don't know that we can without just buying TV ads. No, well, I, I, I think the TV I, ads, again, I'm, using, for, your, for that age group, I'm yeah. using your numbers again. Yeah. I am not too concerned anymore after seeing your numbers about the, the TV portion. I want to hit this. But these but this is for November, Egbert. I That's understand. I, How are you gonna win the primary though? I, here's here's the thing, right? Yeah. Here's the thing. How am I it's not me gonna win the primary, it's y'all that's gonna win the primary. In other words, yeah. when my Theli comes out here and we make my Theli stuff viral and we make you viral, those are I am starting to talk about what millennials have got to do. We have a a, a whole bunch of people here in in Houston, the millennial groups, I can talk about swing left. I can talk about indivisible Houston. That is, the, that is what they are starting to hit. That is what they have to hit. So, Dr. Anand, but it was my pleasure nice having to be in you town. on Politics Done Right. <laughs>